Hey, good morning, guys. It is Thursday, June 4th, and it is time to look back at what the Unfettered Companion metagame looked like. We've seen a rule change that I'll get into here in a minute that seems to uh, nerf, for lack of a better term, the companion mechanic and how it functions. Uh, so let's get into where we've been, what the uh, the last week of the original companion mechanic looked like, and where we might go from here. So here's the new rule. Uh, instead of just being able to cast your companion from your sideboard, now once per game, and I talked about this, uh, this came up as a rumor last week, and it turned out to be correct. Uh, spend three generic mana at sorcery speed to put your companion into your hand. And then from there you can cast it from your hand. So definitely makes it a lot less strong. And and it can't... It's not really an extra card. It's almost like a one-time Diabolic Tutor where you just spend three mana and go search out a specific card and put it in your hand. Um, definitely has weakened the mechanic. And we'll get a little bit of a hint of what things might look like post this from the preliminary results that came out this morning. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. First, I want to talk about where, where we got at the end of all this. So both formats sort of ended up around the 80% companion usage rate. Uh, Modern got there from the bottom up, and Pioneer started backing off. It topped 90% at one point companion usage, and it dropped back down into the low 80s. That said, both formats saw a pretty good mix of archetypes. Um, you've got, you know, your burn decks are common to both. Pioneer was seeing... Uh, you know, Lotus Breach and Demir Inverter, which is kind of a combo control deck. Uh, Modern Ad Nauseum has done quite well as, as a combo deck. Um, you've got your aggro decks at the top. Rugscape Shift has shown up as the control deck of choice. Uh, Four Color Snow Control as well. Esper Control was showing up, I believe, in Pioneer. So the primary archetypes are all there. Um, but of course, you know, we had the, uh, the companion issues and the best analogy I think I saw, I, I wish I could remember who tweeted it out, but imagine taking all the books you've ever read and the diversity of those stories and making the same person be the main character of all of them. And it really does change the way those books look. At the end, and that's kind of where we were. The formats, all kinds of different decks, but when you've got the same two or three characters running them, it makes a difference. Uh, Modern continued to condense and flatten. Um, saw a few fewer decks this week than we did the week before, and the uh, the drop off from the top to the next level was much more shallow than it had been. So, kind of just squishing in what modern had been. I wanted to look at this. Uh, this is, and I apologize for the x-axis not being actual time frame. What you're looking at here is a four event rolling average for every format on the percentage of companions used in the challengers and the super qualifiers that have happened on Magic Online over the duration of the companion era until the rule change. Um, you can see the bands in Vintage and Legacy, the orange and green lines, and how those fell off after Lurus and Zerta were banned in those formats. And Zerta only in Legacy, of course. Um, modern, you can see this slow, the yellow line there, just this slow, steady creep up from the high 60s up towards 80 and uh, that rolling average now is almost exactly 80 percent uh, over the last four events which i think was the entire weekend last weekend 
I think there were two challenges and two super qualifiers that were included there. And you can see the red line Pioneer was way, it was significantly above 90 uh, for a brief period of time and then dropped back down to the 80 range. Standard has always been right around 80, up around, you know, above and below it. But this is kind of what the companions were doing. And you can see at the beginning, people were just getting used to uh, how they were working and what you could do with them. And then the percentages just shot up. And just when you get towards 80% penetration, that's just, that's just too much. And, and I completely understand why they did the rule change. All right, so where did Pioneer end up? We ended up with a relatively aggressive format at the end. Burn and in Soul strategies had the best weeks here at the end. And if, in fact, if you combine the Jeskai and Blue White and Soul decks, it would have been the number one deck of the week. The primary difference here is Jeskai uses Galvanic Blast and, and Insul doesn't, or the Blue White doesn't. Uh, Demir Inverter, not its best week, uh, but I do think you're going to be seeing that deck a lot in the near future. And it remains to be seen what's going to happen here, which of these decks survive and which don't. Uh, but this is kind of where we ended up. The second tier here, uh, Blue Eye Control, the the or two, the Orzov deck, Esper Doom, was hanging around. You'll notice here also Esper Control up in the number three spot. That's basically the same deck except it's not running Doom Foretold, so it tweaks a little bit, but it's the same idea. It's an Esper Control deck, just going about it in a slightly different way. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of where Pioneer ended up, and we'll have to watch and see which. If any of these decks survive and in what format they survive in. Uh, and then the one ofs here, I, kind of, I split them out this time by companion. Uh, we did see one mono black aggro show up. A couple of Loris decks here. This white black humans deck is kind of interesting. Again, we'll see what happens in the future. The Yorion based white X devotion decks really have fallen off the last couple of weeks will be interesting to see if mono white devotion comes back in a companionless format after uh, after this week all right modern uh, gruel monsters back on top after dipping a couple of weeks in a row uh, this deck was a thing before companions so I think this deck is going to hang around. Um, Black Red Prowess. Great mix of hand disruption and aggression. Um, still right near the top. You'll notice here, last week these were in the 30s and then we hit the, the teens here and there was a big, uh, a big drop between the top and the and the third, fourth, fifth place, and that drop is much less significant now. So the top end really flattened out in Modern. Uh, a couple of, uh, let's see, we've got Jun Shadow, which had a great week this week. Um, kind of out of nowhere. I have not gone through and analyzed the deck to see what changed in the deck, if anything, or maybe just people went back to playing it again. But Jun Shadow had a great week. Uh, Rugscape Shift, still hanging around. It's kind of become the control deck of choice. Uh, we'll see four color snow on the next slide, but those are your two primary control decks. Uh, Burn, always around. Ad Nauseam, making a stand here as the combo deck of choice in the end of this format. Uh, Jun dropped off a fair bit. Uh, I think a lot of the Jun players switched over to the Shadow build. And playing that deck, it, not sure, but uh, definitely Jund strategies among the best things to be doing right now. And then Eldrazi Tron here rounding out the the bottom of this tier. Normal Green Tron again with Jacantha. That's kind of become the build of choice. Will that continue? Who knows? Devoted Devastation and Four Color Snow Control and Amulet Titan right behind. I expect Amulet Titan to rise this week. Uh, it's a well-known strategy that didn't depend on companions, and I think it will do well in the coming metagame. 
Uh, humans was interesting. I think humans had four different builds. I want to say there was a Yorion build, a Gigantha build, a companionless build. It might have been two companionless builds. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see the spread there in, in approaches that human players are taking. Niv to Light right behind, and Dredge. And Bant Snowblade. This is, in fact, Snowblade. It is using uh, Stoneforge Mystic. It's not the Snow Control. Those The Snow Control players have gone four-color, and the four-color ones were split among Redless or Blackless. So... You know, it, it's pick your flavor there. Do you want to run black cards or do you want to run red cards? And I don't know that there's a better answer. I think it's play style dependent. Some of the others, it's kind of the stuff you would expect to find at the tail end of modern. Uh, a couple of bog boggle strategies. One is Bant, one is green-white. Uh, so, I mean, you could argue putting boggles up here in the number, you know, with four total decks in this slot, but I do think the Bant deck plays significantly differently. Uh, Hardened Scales and Garuda Titan did not show up this week after cracking the top 20 last week. Um, just either people were off them something else or they just didn't perform, and that's, that's how modern works. So one thing I wanted to look at now that we have done a pretty good job of nerfing companions. There were preliminaries in Pioneer and Modern published this morning. The Pioneer preliminary, we saw uh, preliminaries were averaging close to, or they were at 80% uh, companion penetration. Today's had around 33% companions. The modern preliminary this morning, they'd been averaging almost exactly 70% throughout the life of the companions. It was 24% this morning. So the uh, the companion per, uh, penetration is way down. So we'll see how this develops. It was sort of the same spread of companions, just the percentages dropped by three quarters over what they had been before. Um, we'll see where that goes. But one thing I wanted to do is go back and look at the last week of metagame before Companions hit. And Pioneer looked like this. We had Demir Inverter and Sultai Delirium at the top. The Mono White Devotion deck was right behind. Mono Black Aggro was still up there. That deck suffered a lot in the Companion era because it didn't fit a Companion well. Rankle is one of the best cards in the deck, and you couldn't play it with Obosh. And there were too many 3-4 three, three, and I think even 5 drops. Uh, you couldn't play Lurus. You couldn't play Garuda. So it was difficult for Mono Black to find a footing when you're basically giving up a card to your opponents. So it'll be interesting to see if this deck comes back. People tried it with Obosh and it occasionally made, uh, you know, posted results, but wasn't what it was. Spirits have completely disappeared now from the metagame. Will they come back? I, I bet people will try. Um, but I think it's interesting to look at where the metagame was before the companions hit. Because beyond companions, there's not a lot of cards out of Ikoria that have made an impact in Modern or Pioneer. The real exception here, I think, is Sprite Dragon in Modern. Um, I did a little bit of a survey of the League results for Modern. And speaking of, let's go to that slide and look at what the metagame looked. Speaking of cards, yeah, I know, I'm diverging here. Cards that suffered in the Companion era, Urza, was a big one. It didn't work with any of the Companions, and Urza decks really fell off the map. Um, other than that, Gruel Monsters, Burn, Five Color Niv, Snow Control in whatever mix of colors you want to do here, Amulet Titan, Eldrazi Tron. Those were decks we all expect to see. Infect was one that did not show up much, so we'll see if Infect has a little bit of a rise. But this metagame is not that far off 
of what you would have expected to see in the companion era. So we'll see what modern does. Um, as I was mentioning, I, I did a survey of the modern leagues to see what other Ikoria cards were showing up beyond, um, beyond the companions. And at least in the main decks, I think I found only through the entire month of May, 26 total cards and half of them were Sprite Dragons. So I don't see Ikoria having much of a foothold on the bigger formats at all. We will see where things go, but I expect Modern to come back someplace close to this. Do expect a rise in Urza decks. I think that's going to be the big change in Modern now that the Companions are, are gone. That's about it. Let me know what you think. Uh, was this a good rule change? Where do you think Modern and Pioneer are going from here? Do we go back to where we were at the beginning of April? Or have we learned something from the decks that the Companions brought us that will carry over into this new metagame? And will Companions survive? Right? We saw a you know, two-thirds to three-quarters drop-off in Companions this morning. What'll happen this weekend with the challenges and the Super Qualifiers? I'm really curious to see where that goes. That's about it for now. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like and hit like and subscribe and that notification bell so you know when my next video is coming up. But uh, until then, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.